Yeah, all that like all the tech shit we did in, in school, all the like tech skills we learned was super super fun. And look, I've never like been exceptionally good in tech, but like they literally had no security. Like I could legit go into the control panel. Like I could see their MAC address. I could see the IP address. This is way before like anyone used like IP chicken or whatever. But um man, I would not so much in Woodward, but a little later on, I would mess with the school computers so much. I would use command line, like copy and paste funny things from the internet to like do stupid shit on the command line and crash the computers. I was a way better hacker when I was five than I am right now. That's not even a joke. I'm not even like exaggerating. It's literally true. And it's just because computers had less security when I was five. Like that around around that time, it was like 2004 to 2008 around that time when I was in elementary school computers were just old enough for like everyone to be using them but just new enough for the tech to be so novel that people don't really know what they're doing you know adults don't really know what they're doing so it didn't take long for you to reach the highest levels of computer literacy relative to the rest of the population you know the average computer user and because of that, like the, the students, literally the students knew more about the computers than like the county IT guys. I swear, if I wanted to, I could change my grades. I'm not even exaggerating. I literally, I think I figured out kind of how, like I was trying to, and I kind of figured out how I wasn't, I didn't know, you know, anything about like brute force or any kind of injection or a worm or anything like that. It was legit like all social engineering that allowed me to figure out my teacher's user IDs and passwords. And that you can log in in the school website and get into their Excel sheets. In fact, I figured out for uh, later on in high school, I actually did use the same method to figure out my teacher's username and passwords using a iPhone 5S gyroscopic keylogger. But... The world isn't ready for that one yet. These theoretically, by the way, should be way more popular than they actually are. Um, nobody uses them anymore. And they only worked with jailbroken phones. But uh, each, each key on your keyboard, on a physical keyboard, has a distinct sound and a vibration on the table. Uh, you know, unless you got those uh, Cherry MX Blues. But yeah, even still, every click that you make is has a distinct um uh, timing to it and everything like that which can actually be used sort of as a digital handwriting to figure out who you are based on how you type but yeah we uh me and a few other students would really we'd really be out here legit like hacking effortlessly like not even script kitty level hacking just very basic social engineering, but at the time, that's literally all it took to to change your fucking grades in school. But um, obviously, you know the gyroscopic uh, keylogger is a bit more complex. Um, but that's a little too OP in my opinion for people to really, uh, for like you know, for companies and news outlets to ever sort of make articles and videos and stuff showing how it works because if people figure out how this works you'd be able to crack so much shit dude like so much so many security breaches would happen because of this it'd be insane but uh yeah and and they they're probably even better right now actually that 5s was really good considering the whole thing was able to touch the table and now there's a there's like a little spot for the uh, camera, protruding camera to touch the table. So I don't know how well it would work, but with sound and everything, it's got to be better. But man, technology at the time, the old Windows XP and uh, when Windows 7 dropped and all that, that was all, a, and Windows Vista and all that, that was a big deal. But uh, it was a nice little time slot to be into technology because that's when Flash games became what they did. And, like, at the time, you know, piracy had just become viable. Uh, like, online games were playable. 
video streaming worked wonders if you're watching in 240p uh because like it was it was all so new that no security measures were in place there were no firewalls like legit if you were in like third grade in Jackson Elementary if you wanted to go into a porn website like just go for it all like the history will be erased every time you logged out anyways and the thing is like if you grow up with technology you already have somewhat of an understanding as to how it all works and if you hadn't grown up with it then the learning curve is a real challenge when you're an adult so hiring IT people like back then you couldn't just hire an IT guy in 2008 they were so rare like everyone who understood tech was either kids who grew, who were growing up with it who were still in school or the adults who literally pioneered it and were like inventing the technologies who would later become billionaires owning you know giant tech companies uh, and 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 those were the people who would like you know find random ass people to like learn a bit of technology and be like okay my IT company is going to send out a guy who has very little experience in computers and he's just going to uh you know s- set up a firewall to make sure people don't play balloon tower fence on the school computers but they really couldn't do much and now it's you know they the meta's been updated but it was this really beautiful beautiful sliver of time that kids today will never really know where the students like the kids the eight-year-olds knew more about the school computers and the entire tech system of the school than even the school did and obviously they, they did have you know professionals and the school's like they they had county people you know so they could all pool their resources and you know they didn't have to spend it school to school so they could hire legit people and the systems caught up very very quickly and they did have security in place for a lot of things but um yeah back then it was like nowadays people make memes about how like teachers don't know how like YouTube autoplay works and how to turn it off but dude back then teachers didn't even know what YouTube was it was it was just a beautiful time period like they didn't know you could actually use the computers to have fun while you were supposed to be working like it was so easy to exploit te- like they assumed the only possibility of using computers was getting work done they didn't know fun was a thing you could do they didn't know what switching tabs were they didn't know what switching windows were they just like had sheets of paper with the instructions they would tell us like okay go here they would have pictures on the paper to show like click on this and this is all like to you know introduce kids to technology and just to make things a little easier go a little bit paperless but the teachers still had papers so um yeah switching tabs was op they didn't know what the hell was going on they wouldn't even bother to look they didn't know what it, window switching wasn't even necessary back then just change tabs and uh i was one of those kids who grew up with the computers so just by virtue of being around them i already had an understanding of how things worked i remember i wanted to like hack the school so i would um watch these like hacking videos and i would like try to impress the girls like there was one girl who sat next to me when we took a quiz and it wasn't like a serious quiz it was like a 10 question thing or some some it was on some like club penguin looking website it was like really it was really uh, uh, casual, you know, but it was still like a, there were questions on it. And uh, I literally used inspect elements to go in and like check the uh, uh, names of the, you would look at like each question, each answer, and each of the answers would have like a HTML element saying like, this is the ID of like correct underscore answer or whatever. Or like correct dash answer. And I would just look at it and be like, ah, oh, this is the correct answer. And I would just get all of them right. Because the JavaScript was just parsing the correct answers from the HTML. They wouldn't ha- they wouldn't generate HTML using JavaScript back then. So it was um well they would, but not on these kinds of websites, you know. So it was super, super easy. And she was so blown away by this dude. It was I felt like I was such a fucking bad motherfucker after that. 
It literally left the answer key inside the site. And uh, even then, even if they did hide it in the JavaScript, I, the JavaScript is public. You go to the sources tab, it's right there. But, bro, back then I was, some, I was on some other shit, bro. Um, it just, I think a lot of other kids have the same experience around that time because you can't keep up with, when a technology is very new like that and it's, you get a, a insane advantage from being born with it. The adults who had to learn it when they're, when they're adults just can't keep up with the plasticity of children. In fact, I don't think, I, even after that for like years, I don't recall ever seeing anything SQL related. Like I don't, I don't recall ever even hearing that word back then up until like 2010 or something like that. I don't even know if SQL was a thing back then. I'm sure it was, but I never saw it. I never saw anything in like a SQL database. I never saw any sort of like a, a call for it. I never saw anything for like local storage or anything like that. It was like, it was everything was front end. In fact, the way that the way that uh, they would grade it, literally it was entirely front end. The way it would be graded was the teacher, it would like take everything and it would show you whether or not you got the answer right or wrong. And then it would show that like on your screen, what was right and wrong. It wouldn't actually grade it. And then the teacher would come and write like and check the answers and write down what you got. And that's how it was graded. They would come around with a pen and paper and that was their best integration of technology at the time. Or even like the whole shit with like technology. You probably would miss out on the probably the only time period that will ever exist in history where you could reasonably hack your grades if you put your mind to it like i'm pretty sure my school right now like my high school if i go back to the website i'm not in high school anymore but if i were to go back to that website i'm pretty positive it would still be vulnerable to sql injects i probably could have done it we used to use sql injects on roblox and uh i think it still works today um, in Roblox, but not, uh, server side, only client side, which really sucks. But yeah, they, Roblox really leveled up their security, probably more than a lot of schools, but nowadays security is much, much better and it doesn't cost very much to get good cybersecurity. Not, I mean, it's still very expensive, but not at all like how it used to be. And, uh, the technology is nowhere near as vulnerable as it used to be. So yeah, hacking your grades nowadays is going to be like a very, very rare thing. Uh, back then, if you were into technology at all, like if you were just playing Roblox frequently, I mean, you were probably tech savvy enough to really figure something out, whether through social engineering or something else, you could probably figure out how to do it. You know, it would literally be easier to hack your grades in 2007 in in public school in America than it would be to just build your own website. No, WordPress was a thing. Was it a thing in 2007? I know it was a thing in 2009 because that's when we made websites. But if you could make websites as a, during that time, you could definitely change your grades. And uh, I don't think that's going to be happening at a, you know reasonable level anytime soon unless you're some tech genius or something like that you know but man nobody even uses adobe flash anymore so that's something that was you know gone i'm sure there's things in school today that i didn't get to experience that uh those kids are gonna get to experience but it's like i don't know what those are and adobe flash is fucking awesome it was, um, the way I did it was there's like a home drive for the school. So there's like different drives. There's different hard drives that the, the, um, each computer can access. Right. And it's all connected to like one main, uh, school server. But, uh, there's a home drive that like, there's a, it's a shared thing among all the students. And it's not like each person gets a partitioned amount out of it, but it's like each person has, uh, like read and write access to only the files that they put in there, right? There's something, I don't know what kind of system they had set up, but it was a 16 terabyte drive that 
once it was filled up, it was filled up, and anybody could fill up as much as much of it as they wanted to. So it's it's um it wasn't just one system that was susceptible to zip bombing. It was their whole ship, bro. And I think look, that's a fine system to have if you're going to integrate a a uh, a, a a way to separate out like syncing between the computer hard drive and the server storage is only done after the student has already logged out and you know the computer hasn't crashed yet and things like that you know that would make that would make them much more um resilient to this sort of thing but for some reason i don't know why uh things were done on the back end immediately there was no sort of security maybe there was i, I don't know what the hell i don't uh, but their security was garbage and um they were inviting this kind of shit, bro. They were inviting somebody to zip bomb them. And look, I'm Indian, so I, I'm, I'm brown. I got brown skin, so I bomb. But I'm Indian, so I'm good with computers. So I, I do a different kind of bombing, all right? I thought of that just now. I never thought, I never came up with that before. And that would have been a really funny joke if I was 13 and edgy. But now it's just, uh, just something to tie it along with the rest of what I'm saying. But yeah, so... If the home drive gets too big, uh, the system will crash and people won't be able to use it. Shocker, right? And they would tell us about this, like, you know, um, I had a lot of stuff in my home drive. I would download a lot of music on there and stuff, which you're not allowed to do. And teachers would, like, tell you to get rid of stuff. Like, this happened to me and a few of my friends. <sighs> They'll, like, check your home drive and be like, oh, there's games on here. There's Halo on here and all this shit. Delete it. And they'll wipe your home drive. And when they when they did it, we would get detentions, and this happened like three or four times. Um, and we would be like, "Oh, we're so sorry," and they they wouldn't actually send us a detention because it's like, "Bro, they're sending us a detention with all these other kids who were there because they like, you know, were like selling drugs in the hallway, and um, we're there with them because we wanted to like fucking we wanted to download fucking Uzi songs on like the." It, it it wouldn't make sense and they'd be like dog why are you here you know so yeah but zip bombing is totally a reasonable offense when i look at it it's totally reasonable to suspend someone from the school for doing that but yeah i kind of don't want to say how i did it but at the same time Okay, I don't condone this, and, um, like, I don't condone any illegal, I don't know if this is illegal or not, I think it is, I think this is a, a security vulnerability, I think it's illegal, that would be like saying buffer overflow attacks are not, like that, yeah, it's, this is definitely illegal, and, and don't do this, and I don't condone this, and you shouldn't do this, and I'm not liable for anything you do, but, Here's the thing. If you're going to do it, you got to be sneaky about it. Because the IT guys are going to see, they're going to look into it and be like, oh, this happened on this guy's account. So, you could consider this hacking in a way because hacking could, you could call it just problem solving, just creative problem solving. But there's no code needed here. This is all script kitty shit. Forget all about like hacking shit for a second. Just think to yourself, what's a creative, even social engineering way? What's just a creative method where I can get this to be done and I can make sure I don't get caught? Just think to yourself, how can I problem solve? And 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 don't even think about hacking. Don't think about any any even a single line of code being involved. Well, there was a bit, bit of lines of code, but not there's no programming happening here. It just like this kind of shit is like literally the most simple shit. Like if somebody texts me and I don't know who they are, I can add their contact to my phone as the as a letter a and then i'd go on snapchat and check you know uh the contacts a new contact and i'd go and i'd look for the letter a or i check group me or whatever i look on all the social media platforms that would sync phone numbers and have their data and use their data against them to be like hmm who was this phone number linked to ah their snapchat username is a last first name and last name i know exactly who they are now it's an easy way to figure out who owns a phone number no computer skills needed no computer needed you don't need to so it's just like, you can do a lot of shit 
DDoSing, swatting. You can do all that shit without even using a computer, dude. And none of this is like, you know, real, real hacking. But it's like, in a way, it's, in a way, it's fucked up. In a way, it's sociopathic. In a way, it's the internet turning you into a sociopath and stripping your empathy away from you, turning you into a username and an IP address. But, so this is, this is what I did, okay? So, one day they brought laptops into the class and, uh, you know, we got paired up in twos for each laptop. So, I logged into the computer, so I knew the password, and then I logged into Chrome. Because sometimes, for some weird reason, I don't know what conditions need to be met for this to happen. I'd love to know, though. I'd love to look into it. Uh, Chrome will not actually ask you for your Chrome password. They will ask you for the login to the computer that you just logged into to, uh, uh, to view your passwords. And I knew that this was a possibility, so I logged into both. So um, I told him, like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, just uh, log in the school website. So we had to log in the school website, uh, go on there and download, like, whatever, you know, fucking document we had to use and fill out or something, you know. Um, so I, I'm like, I tell him, I'm like, oh, let me do something real quick. Let me check my bag real quick. Here, you log in the computer. Because it didn't really matter who logged in, um, whoever logged in, like, either way you would just be downloading the thing and then you log right right back out so he logs in and uh this was back then when the system was a bit different but it would save the password um and the key wasn't really like the pop-up going like hey bro you want to save your password it wasn't really a thing it would just save it or no i think it would save it and then like some some time pass and be like Yo, do you want to save it? And even if you hit no, the thing would still show up there. It would still be there in case at any point you change your mind. And so I took it back and when he wasn't looking, I hit yes. Because I knew it wasn't going to save without me hitting yes. I think it would have because Chrome was really intrusive and it still is. Um, but I just wanted to be sure. So uh, I did hit yes when he wasn't looking. And so I had a student ID and password. And that same student ID and password is what's used to buy lunch and log into other computers and do all that stuff, right? And so, uh, yeah, I log back into Chrome at home the next day and uh, got his thing. And then I went, I memorized it, went back to school. Like, So they don't show um, the command prompt like as an app when you search for it or anything like that. But for some reason they forgot that you could still use a CMD when you're in any folder and they didn't patch that. Like it wasn't like you'd be better off allowing people to search for command prompt and just restrict, just closing the application. The moment it's wait, no, there's probably security vulnerability with that too. Listen, dude, it didn't matter what they did. We would have found something. We would have found something. We're, we're trolls. We're trolls at the end of the day. And that's what you got to do. If you want to really like take advantage and, and uh, like, enjoy school to its fullest you you troll them you you push them to the limits and so uh yeah cmd worked and um you know what i mean when you hit when you type in cmd like in the the directory like bar you know what i'm talking about and you just say enter and it'll open it up in that folder so yeah hit cmd damn i don't remember uh what exactly i did cd cd ls whatever um getting into whatever folder i had to get into and uh there were a few pieces of code i put in to access the like there was some like wmic disk drive commands it was some shit like that there were commands along those lines to access storage drives but they were like administrator only but we were still still able to access them um we felt like fucking hackers, dude. We were like, ooh, I, I'm telling my friends next to me, I'm like, I have the commands to open the secret file explorer and, and all that shit, you know? And it would show you the network drive and it would show you the home drive and the shared drive and all that shit. And there were other ways to, of, of viewing that sort of thing. But um, it allowed us to get into like the home drive, home drive from an administrator uh like a read-only side of things where we couldn't write. We still didn't have write permissions, right? But 
um, we were able to go in there, and it wasn't even read only. It was just read only for the uh, file directories, but you couldn't go past anybody's uh, thing. We'd go into the H drive, and it was just called H, and we would scroll through, and there would be a bunch of student IDs. We'd click on it, enter a password, and it was we entered that password for that student ID. When we found it, boom, we're in his home drive. It was exactly what his home drive was. And uh, this was this was more like a this was more like I feel like for the teachers and stuff to be able to and administrators and all that stuff to be able to go into um, students' accounts and do what they did to us when they said to us in class like, "Hey, you guys' home drives are huge. Like, get some shit out of your home drive. Look, you have a fucking like the Nardwars, Narwars swimming in the ocean causing a commotion because they are so awesome." song in here delete it like get rid of why do you have the whole entire life of pablo on here and why do you have the torrent link as well the magnet like down why do you have all that shit get rid of all that and so um i believe this was like the the area that we were accessing was the area that was meant for the teachers to moderate the students' home drives i think uh because that's really what it looked like and uh so you know the rest is history we go in there, we enter his password, and I, I looked at his files for a little bit, and I'm like, all right, cool, schoolwork, pretty normal student. Let me take this uh, photo of, like, I don't know, Barack Obama eating watermelon or something. I don't know what the hell it was, uh, but it was a, you know, 1,000 terabyte photo with, like, tons of uh, steg high text in there for some reason. And I think it was just nothing but, uh, I think it was just the letter K repeatedly a whole bunch of times. That's what a lot of these were. Um, and uh, yeah, opened it up and that was that. The school system was down for the entire rest of the day. And uh, that was first period, so it was down for like six hours. Only a few people ever knew it was me. And uh, nothing ever happened to that guy. Like... I'm pretty positive they'd be able to figure out who it was, like who whose home drive it was. But I think they if they had a robust system, they'd be like, okay, wait, 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 wait. It was actually a fraud on his account logging into this and going through. But I, I don't think they dug that far. And I think um, I don't think their systems were that robust. And I think he just, when he got called in the office and all that shit, he probably made a very compelling argument like it wasn't me. Someone was trying to screw me. Someone was trying to frame me. It definitely wasn't me. And, he, you know, he, he, you know, was very, very sincere and very genuine with it. And they're like, okay, fine, whatever. I, and, and I think they probably believed that um, it probably was somebody else, but they, they just couldn't catch whoever it was. Surprise, surprise. It was actually me. And uh, if the school was watching this and you're just finding out about this now, um... You have no proof. Fuck you. This is not a confession. This is all a joke.